go ahead, delete all of your gameplay footage files and even your full recordings of your live streams because you definitely won't want to have those again. Or will you? Well, the company Synology offers the ultimate solution to satisfy all of your data storage needs through their DisStation NAS device, also known as Network Attached Storage. And if you're not aware what Network Attached Storage is, this is essentially a device that can sit on your network to where you can share files to this device. It will store those files and then you can securely access them through any of the devices on your network, such as a mobile phone, a computer, a laptop, you name it, you can access Access the files that are sitting on this bad boy. Now you might be asking yourself right now, what makes using network attached storage so much better than using cheap options such as physical external drives in the form of a hard disk drive or a solid state drive and even cloud options such as Google Drive and OneDrive? Well, the simple answer to that question is the level of efficiency and long-term cost you will have associated with all three of those different options. Physical external drives such as these are not connected directly to your network. So anytime you want to access your files or gameplay footage, let's plays, whatever you have, you're really only going to be able to plug these into one computer or device at a time. Now, looking at the cloud side of things, you have to pay for the storage every single month or at least on a yearly basis. Typically, if we take Google Drive, for example, and we want to have two terabytes of storage allocated to our account, then we're going to need to pay $100 a year in order to maintain that level of storage access. Now, if we take a look at network attached storage, getting a device like this is gonna start off at around $450 to $600, and it's gonna go up from there depending on how many drive bays that you want, as well as the physical drives themselves. You will have to pick up those, and you should typically find hard disk drives around $50 per two terabytes of storage. So you would have to tack those hardware costs on to the total amount of the entire network. NAS unit. If you have enough data that you need to store for the long term, even beyond two terabytes, five terabytes, even more than 10 terabytes, if you're going crazy with it, the cost for being able to keep your stuff stored in the cloud is just going to continue to rise. At least with this device, you're going to be able to expand your storage for really as high as you want it to go. It even has SSD slots that you can install on the bottom. So as you might be able to imagine, the speeds are absolutely crazy using this device, especially if your internet is is good. I performed an upload speed test using a gameplay file that was only 500 megabytes in size and even giving Google Drive a little bit of a head start with this file upload, transferring it to my NAS onto the hard disk drives was almost instant. When the transfer to Google Drive finally finished, over three minutes had already passed. The speeds using this NAS are also so great to where I was able to use OBS Studio and record my gameplay directly to my NAS. So that means whenever I was finished recording, that gameplay footage would be available not only on my computer I was working off of, but also my Mac. I could check it out on whatever device, that I wanted essentially to be able to view the gameplay and copy it to wherever I want it from there. What about editing the videos off the NAS? Well, that works just as good too. Very negligible differences editing off the NAS versus off of my local computer. Of course, my local computer is gonna be a little bit faster because I'm working directly off the SSD, but I also have an SSD in this NAS that I could easily work off of if I configured it. Speaking of configurations, this NAS was an absolute breeze to set up. You do get a quick installation guide that comes along with the NAS to show you step-by-step -step with pictures. But to put it simply, you first need to have your NAS as well as the disk drives that you plan on utilizing with it. From there, you're gonna need to find a good place within your home to put the NAS, preferably somewhere extremely close to the router because you're not only gonna need to supply power to the device to the closest wall outlet, but you're gonna need to plug in the ethernet cable from the NAS to the router. That way, once you power the device on and then on your computer, you go to find.synology.com, you'll be able to find the NAS on your NAS. Network. You'll also need to set up a RAID type, which I just used the default, which was SHR. This is Synology's hybrid storage management system, allowing the space on the drives to be maximized while protecting the data in the case of a drive failure. I put a link in the description below if you want to learn more about this topic. Once you're into the NAS's operating system, you can go to the control panel application, and this is where you can create a shared folder so that way you have a place to start putting your files into. If you want to be able to control and access the files, 
directly from your Windows or Mac File Explorer. You can do that by going to the directory path that is listed within the File Services tab here. And if you wanna be able to access your files remotely away from your network, you can do that as well by going to the External Access tab and then making sure the Quick Connect function is on. And then you're gonna see a URL that you can access to be able to get onto your NAS from a remote location. And if you're wondering if this NAS gets noisy while it's active and running, I will tell you that it does not. It is extremely quiet. Is it dead silent? No, but it is so quiet to where I don't even notice that this thing is running in my room. So who is this product for then? This is for the people that want or need to store and collect a large amount of data. And when I say large, I'm talking about hundreds of gigabytes or even terabytes of data. We're not talking about some chump amount of data. And you might as well just stick with the cloud solutions as those will be much cheaper for the small amount of data that you have. You'll really start seeing the value out of the NAS if you're gonna be recording long gameplay sessions or clips and even storing your full stream VODs and you don't wanna have all that stuff on the computer. Having a NAS is a great central and even quick access location to be able to get to those files without having to pour hundreds of dollars year in, year out trying to maintain a cloud storage solution. Just keep in mind that you should still follow best practices for backup. So if you have gameplay footage or a file that is just so critical and you never ever want to lose it, then you're gonna need to back it up to the cloud or another external remote device. Cause God forbid somebody comes into your house and steals this, or let's say it just gets destroyed for whatever reason, then you're gonna be out of your data. That's probably the only drawback. But shout out to Synology for hooking me up with their device. They didn't pay me anything to say something good or bad. Everything I shared was based on my personal experience but let me know what you guys think in the comment section below and also check out links in description below of all of these products that I mentioned thank you for watching I'll see you guys in the next one peace